Welcome to Past, Present, Future, the Full Circle podcast, where we ask questions that nobody else wants to ask, but that you want the answers to. Please subscribe, share, and drop a comment so we know you were there. Well, let's get into it then. So past, present, future, episode 27. So um, we've recorded three episodes today. This is our third episode and it's been a day of first. So we had our first producer, we had our first photographer, and we now have our first artist with a mask. So yo. we're in the building. We've got armor here. Come on, yo, the one and only, the hood hero. Are you listening? Newham's finest. Soon to be the biggest artist of this decade and the next. You get me? Trust me. Armour. Let's go. Okay, that's a good intro. It's a good intro. So, as I always do, and as I kind of explained to you before starting, we like to go through, obviously, the, the past, present, future journey. And it started with you, as you mentioned, in Newham. Mm. So, I want us to go back to the very beginning and to kind of understand from your perspective, as we've had a few Newham artists on, mm. how was growing up in the area? Bro, you know what? Newham is a place full of... Um diversity and bad energy bro that's like the best way i can put it there's nothing else i would attribute to newham you know what there's a lot of culture in newham you get me like the whole east end um you know what i'm saying mm. the, the whole east end stereotype mm. i would say like fits newham very well mm-hmm. do you get what i'm saying it's very rugged very rigid very raw do you get what i'm saying but yeah that's what it is man when you say bad energy what exactly do you mean by that um, when I say bad energy, what I'm trying to say is that um, not more bad than good happens in Newham. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely more bad than good. And when it's like that, people just kind of gravitate to survival mode, if you know what I'm saying. So Newham's one of those areas where most people, and I don't just mean like street people, or just guys, like girls as well, normal people are in survival mode. Like they're just trying to do what they can to just better themselves and get out or bring others down with them to make themselves feel better. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Mm. It's one of them places, bro. Why do you think it is like that? Um, I don't know, bro, man. You know what? There's a few reasons. Maybe like lack of, lack of role models, lack of um, kind of like lack of inspiration, and just lack of options as well. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? So I feel like that's kind of what's made Newham what it is today. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm here, though. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Turn things around. You said um, the first response to that was lack of role models. Mm. How, um, I guess, transferable is that statement to your life? Completely transferable, bro. But I'm I'm a different kind of person. Like, I... Um, make the most out of bad situations. I turn negative to positives. I learn from other people's mistakes. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Which is kind of like, you know what? Like, I'm fortunate, innit? Like, man's grown up naturally with a solid head on my shoulders. Mm-hmm. Luckily, thankfully, fortunately. Do you get what I'm saying? So, um, I'm, I don't know. I'm able to see things in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? But I feel like from me looking in, like, I feel like sometimes, even though I'm there, I feel like an outsider looking in because I have a different perspectives to other people. And this is just kind of like what I analyse and what I take mm-hmm. from it. Do you get what I'm saying? Where do you think that comes from? The the ability to, to kind of see things differently? I don't know, bro, man. I don't know, man. I, don't, I actually don't know, man. Maybe I don't know, man. Maybe I'm fucking autistic or something. I don't, I, I don't know, my bro, man. But I, it's, it's, it's facts though, isn't it? Like, mm. I just seen that Growing up my whole life, do you get what I'm saying? I just like, and you know what? It's it's kind of like a gift and a curse. Okay. Like even with my own um, close people and whatnot. Like let's say um, one of my friends falls out with someone. Yeah, I have like automatically, and I can't even help it. When I speak to them, I always kind of try to find the perspective of the person that they've fallen out okay. with, and they get angry with me because mm. I'm like, no, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't have done this. Or maybe you should have approached the situation in this way. So, like, do you understand what I'm trying to yeah, say, bro? Yeah, like, yeah, I, I just kind of like look at things in as many perspectives as mm-hmm. I can before I make my own decision. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know what's brought that about, but it's just me and it. 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I think, like you say, it is unique. And I wanted to understand, um, again, actually tapping into your answer there, where you say, like, if your friend comes to you, you try and take the perspective of the other person. And from mm. what I gather from speaking to, to other newer artists, it gets to a place where it's very fragmented in terms of different areas and, and friends kind of fall apart dependent on the area. So I wanted to ask yeah. you, how was like your school life and at what point did it become real where things started to drop off? You know me, I feel like maybe maybe this might be a reason why I have a different perspective to a lot of the other people in Newham because my school in general, I'm not saying like everyone in there, but just in general, the school that I went to was like not really kind of accepted by everyone anyway. Why? Um, I don't know, man. Just the kind of mix of people that, uh, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know. But my school was kind of seen as a wet school. If you understand what I'm saying? It weren't the cool one. Do you know what I'm saying? There was a few cool ones that had all the cool people and whatnot. But my one wasn't that. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So I feel like maybe that's why... Um, maybe maybe that kind of contributes to the mm-hmm. change in perspective, um, contributes to the different perspective that I might have, a, maybe compared to the other new artists or the new people that you've come, afro- um, come across. Do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's it. How do you feel about going to that school then, the one that was dubbed as, you, you said, not the cool one? Bro, I love me, innit, bro? I don't give no fucks, man. You get me? I can go anywhere, bro. I don't mind. So that's it, bro. Makes a lot of I sense. Might, I can go to the cool school. I can go mm. to the shit school, but I'm 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 cool in it. So that's it. It's a great answer, and um, I think it shows resilience as well, which is one thing that we're going to tap into later down the line. But at what point did did music come into into the picture? Um, well, for for everyone, like for the general public, um, I've like started pursuing music when I was in prison mm-hmm. like as like I wanted wanted it to be like a profession mm-hmm. do you get what I'm saying um, but music in general has been in my life for as long as I can remember mm-hmm. I probably like started writing like raps and pro- raps and poems and things like that when I was about 10 years old so we're talking like mm-hmm. 18 years ago mm-hmm. do you get what I'm saying and at what point did you think like you said you wanted to make it into a profession and that's something in prison but at what point did you think actually like this is this is my calling I want to do this bro it's always been my calling bro it's destiny bro trust me like man's like such a diverse personality and what like I said to you I understand things from different perspectives mm-hmm. um, so I feel like it's always been my calling but I've you know bro life bro life gets in the way bro you know what I'm saying like road shit going to jail fam- like you know what I'm saying bro just different things that's kind of taken man away from that which probably looking in hindsight were like essential in like me telling my story and being like who I am today yeah do you get what I'm saying so maybe it was meant to happen that way Mm -hmm. but this music shit is destiny yeah for me anyway like it's always been something that I revolve back to Mm -hmm. do you get what I'm saying and this is like the first time obviously the music the UK music scene's in a different place now um I'm in a different place now headspace wise and whatnot and um, yeah, man, it just all fell into place at the right time, I feel like. And mm. you know what, man? It's like, it seems to be working. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, get me, bro. You touched upon it there um, when you were talking about jail, mm. but also something that you said within an earlier answer, you said, like, I have this ability to turn negatives into positives. So I wanted to understand and for you to expand on how you turned that negative situation of jail into a positive. Um... You know what, bro, yeah? Like, something that's, like, really important to me is um, people, friendship. So, like, especially, like, good people. Do you know what I'm saying? Ethics, morals, loyalty. Like, all the things you expect from your friend. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? These things are, like, really important to me. So, when I got to prison... um, In prison, it's nothing like that. In prison, you really are around the worst of the worst in general. Do you get what I'm saying? So all the things that I value, I noticed these people I'm around, they don't value. They value like different stuff. They value like how well known you are or how far you're willing to go if someone does wrong to you. And 
how many people you've like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Mm. Like put, instilled fear into you or gain respect from or do you get what I'm saying, my bro? So straight away, I could see that I'm very different mm-hmm. from these people. And it just kind of reminded me why I'm meant to step forward and take the role that I'm doing right now, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? I really feel like a leader for my community, mm-hmm. bro. I am a leader. For, it's not how I feel. I, I am a leader for my community, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? It hasn't really um, played out yet because it's still early stages, but that is what ev- that's what's, ev- that, that is what everyone is going to see. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying, my bro? But yeah, um, Joe made me realise that because of the difference in mentality compared to the majority of the people that I was around. Do you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I was interested, actually, you mentioned that your values with the people that you were in jail with were very much not aligned. You had mm. different values. How much friction did that create in jail? Um, a little bit. Not much. Because you know what? Some A lot of people admired it. Do you get what I'm saying? They, a lot of people could admire um, just the difference. Mm. The difference about me. Do you get what I'm saying? So it, it actually, like, a lot of people gravitated towards it. Some people resisted, do you mm. know what I'm saying? And um, But in general, a lot of people fucked with man in prison, man. And I feel like that's why I kind of get so much love out here right mm. now. And why my thing seems to be kind of growing so fast because, like, you know what I'm saying, my bro, man? Like, I'm, I'm a real energy person, mm. bro, man. Vibes are proper, do you know what I'm saying? So if my vibes are proper, and even if you're around shit people, but your vibes are proper as well, mm-hmm. you're going to get it. Do you know what I'm saying, my bro? Mm-hmm. How long were you in for? Um, two and a half, just over two and a half years. So I got a five do half and obviously I got a few extra days for like phones and drugs and, you know what I'm saying, my mm. but We're out here now, isn't it? And how much changed from the last day you spent outside to the first day you were released? How much changed in that period? Boy, hey, boy. Hey, listening, you see this fucking... Um, paying for shit with your face on your phone and that bro see when I see that shit that that was like the first thing that kind of blew my mind away even like when I came out I'm seeing like Cali's all, in all these amazing pretty packs now do you know what I'm saying real artistry mm-hmm. there do you know what I'm saying my bro like there's a few like not not much has changed but there's been a few few key things but um, in general it's more it's more my mentality that's changed do you get what I'm saying? So I see things differently, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying, my bro, man? I, I, I embrace change and growth. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm just that type of person. So, um, yeah, man, that's it really, bro. Like, there hasn't been, like, no major change since I come out of jail. Everyone's still on, like, the same shit and the same shit is still happening maybe in just slightly different ways. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, man. I don't know man bro I'm in Newham bro shit don't really change that much bro do you get what I'm saying yeah it's really powerful and to, to summarise the, the topic what would you say is like the one biggest lesson that you learned from, from your time inside that you can apply to your day to day life in, in the present um, I can probably think of more than one yeah a kind of negative one yeah is that when I was in prison I didn't really Well, when I first got to prison, yeah, I didn't really realise, especially because I, like, I choose the people I'm around so Mm -hmm. selectively. Like, I'm so careful about who I, sorry, who I have around me. Like, I like to have good people around me. Sure. So where I didn't have that choice in prison, the extent that I saw, like, what people would do just to get their own way, like, people will do wrong to their friends, and people like do you get what I'm saying, my mm-hmm. bro. Like just the type of things that people would do is really like kind of blew my mind away. Like because I kind of um, distanced myself from a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying in general. So that's one thing that really stood out. I I I, I kind of like um, when it comes to people and and how far they're willing to go to get what they want or do wrong to someone. It kind of like shifted my perspective on that a bit. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, there's actually no rules out here. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying, bro? Joe will show you that, bro. Like, I've seen guys get fully violated in jail, bro. Like, to a point where, bro, they want to kill themselves, bro. They're not They're not the same person anymore. Luckily, that's not me, but I've seen it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, one good thing I've taken from Joe, um, 
Mm, what good have I taken from Joe? Bro, you know what, man? Me like me taking good from Joe was more like a personal thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's just stuff that I realized in myself, like what I want to do with my life. I just wanna I kind of realized who I wanna be mm-hmm. in Joe. Do you get what I'm saying? In terms of music, in terms of how I wanna kind of represent for my people, how I wanna present myself, what I wanna do for the people around me. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was like a one thing I would say about Joe that's amazing, yeah, in this country, because um, prison in this country is cool, man. It's not that bad, bro. Honestly, like, if you're a person that can, like, carry yourself correctly, prison is fine. Like, you know what? I don't believe no one should have any problem in prison. And to be fair, it's a good time to reflect without any pressure. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you want to get your mind right, prison can be a good place. So that's one thing I would say mm. about prison. Do you know what I'm saying? It's powerful. So thank you for, for going into it. And I appreciate the answer. Don't <laughs> worry, you know. <laughs> yeah, come, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, you spoke about a positive at the end of your uh, at the end, end of your answer. And I guess potentially this is another positive is obviously the hear my phone calls tape. Okay, um, I love it. Well, you heard that, yeah? Yeah, of course. Oh, my brother, you know. Yeah. Yo, 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 <laughs> go stream that. Yo, yo, hear my phone calls right, out right now. You get me? So... Before we transition into the present, mm. how would you summarise that project for someone that hasn't listened to it? That project, yeah, gives an insight into prison mm-hmm. and what prison life is like. But more so, more so, I feel like that project is for people that have been to prison. Mm-hmm. More so. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that that is for everyone, obviously. But I feel like if you've been to prison, some of the things that I'm talking about you'll connect with much more yeah, because you've been Experience. through them. Yeah, because I kind of like have a lighthearted approach in my music. Mm. So um, some topics are very serious. Mm-hmm. So like, let's say like, I don't know, like let's say I was like, obviously I do like a lot of drill yep. and up-tempo music. Yep. If I was like, um, like a serious trap deep rapper, I could be discussing those same topics in a much more solemn, mm-hmm. depressing, um, thought pro like you know what I'm saying? Like just in a way that kind of makes it seem like very down, low mm-hmm. mood, all of that. Do you get what I'm saying? But I've kind of taken these same topics and just added like a, a light-hearted, mm-hmm. kind of jokey um approach. To make it more digestible, maybe? That's just my personality. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm a light-hearted person. Do you get what I'm saying? But um, I feel like that's what I've kind of done for the people that's been to prison. So they can kind of look back at that experience um, and just kind of laugh on it mm-hmm. and and kind of like take from my approach in terms of like just turn it into a positive, mm-hmm. turn it around. You can leave that place and come out better the other side. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's kind of what what I feel like I want people to take from it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Even if you've never been to prison, like, mm. you can fantasize about it. Do you get what I'm saying, my bro? And you can kind of, like, gain a picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. How much of you releasing that tape was you saying, look, I'm, I'm ready to leave that behind and, and to move on to new things? Um, Pretty much completely. Completely, because, like, when I released that tape, I feel like, you know what, man, let's, let's stop talking about prison right now. Mm. Because um, that's that's not all I'm about. Like, mm. I'm a person that's um, like I said to you before. Like, I've got a lot of layers in it. Like, I've understood a lot of different things, like prison, road, um, family, friendship, mm. um, things like faith, like religion. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Mm. Like, I'm I'm a person that kind of looks into a lot of stuff and has my own perspective on it. Mm. So that's the prison chapter that can kind of be closed now. Mm. I'm not saying I'm not never going to mention prison again, but yeah, I'm definitely trying to um, move on from that. That, yeah. was, that was that part of that story. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So now we're moving on to other things. Yeah. You said within one of the other things that you mentioned, you, you mentioned family life. What was your family life like? Um, my family life is like real up and down, man. I, I'm like, I've got a real strong family unit with um, me and my mother and my sister. Do you get what I'm saying? But... Um, my family life's been up and down. You know what I'm saying, bro? I've been, like, exposed to, like, domestic violence and um, just, like, 
just toxic relationships mm -hmm. and shit like that. Do you get what I'm saying, my bro? Mm. Um, but you know what I'm saying, my bro? Like, everything that man's been through, what I try to do, I feel like what I'm doing is more a service yeah. to the people that's listening to me. Do you get what I'm saying? So anything I've been through, and like I said, I can digest it in different perspectives. Um, I just want to put it out there for people to like learn from mm -hmm. and just understand and, you know what I'm saying, gain strength from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, my bro? So, yeah, like, my family life is up and down. Overall, it's good. You know what I'm saying? I come from a real supportive and loving family, but you get me? I've seen some shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. How much does that shit that you've seen still affect you today? Bro, we're humans, innit, bro, man? Everything that we see and go through affects us, innit? But it's just a matter of, like, how you deal with it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, like, I everything I go through, I project it back to the to the world, to the universe, to other mm. people in a in a positive way after I've digested it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get what I'm saying, bro? Hundred percent. I'll understand. give it. I'll give it back to people in a way that they can learn from it and use it to better themselves and help themselves as well. Do you get what I'm saying? Hundred percent. Which is obviously through the music. So to talk about it, three singles I think so far this year. This year, what are we doing? Three singles this year. Hold on. Uh, we've done Newham Roads. Was Don't Rap With Me this year? It's definitely three singles. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Laurie knows. Yeah, Laurie done his research. If he's, if Laurie says it's three singles, it's fucking three singles, bro. So to transition into the present, to, to touch upon the music, which is obviously super important, mm. what are you working on at the moment? Well, what's going on in the present moment? My brother, I'm working on so much stuff right now. Not just music. I don't know if you've seen, but I put a board game out for HMP project did you see that no okay so when i dropped the hmp project here are my phone calls which is like a prison themed mm -hmm. project i dropped also a prison themed board game that's sick yeah it's how's it gone it's sold out bro it's sold out you can't get one bro. how many units don't worry about how many units but <laughs> you can't get one bro okay you can't, you can't get one in it what's next then how, how, how many are you gonna are you gonna re-up or no, no, that you see that you see me, bro. I'm a, I'm a person that's like I appreciate people that's kind of follow the journey with me. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? So now that that's done, the people that have got that, which is quite a few, yeah, that's 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 their connection mm -hmm. with me. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that's my first project. They bought it off me directly yeah. through my website. I went to the post office, sent it to them, mm -hmm. wrote their name and address with my hand. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So. um I think that one I'm not going to re-up on but for this next project I do have another game coming so this project is going to be called Businessman mm -hmm. because um, I had my most so when I was in prison I done jail I done freestyles from hmm. jail hmm. I don't know if you're aware of that but I done freestyles in jail and that's kind of what kind of got me bubbling mm -hmm. a bit in the urban scene do you get what I'm saying? So I was getting love from like Kenny Allstar, like saw, yeah. a few other rappers and, you know what I'm saying? Like just various different people in the scene, like blog pages and, do you get what I'm saying? Like videographers and blah, blah, blah. Um, but so when I was dropping freestyles, it was a freestyle I done called Businessman, mm -hmm. which um, seemed to get more traction than all the other freestyles okay. by far. Um, and that freestyle was very like sentimental to me because mm -hmm. I'm actually talking about like something that's really important to me like ethos and just kind of like um, ethics and mm -hmm. how I kind of view myself in in this space do you get what I'm saying so um, yeah I decided to call my project businessman so um, this game that I'm putting out is going to be the businessman game mm -hmm. so that's going to give people opportunity to feel like a businessman learn um, how to be a businessman or woman, obviously, um, and just kind of get a little taste of what it means to have your own business. Mm -hmm. So that's what that game is about. That's going to be a card game that's due to come out soon. Um, obviously, I've got the project coming out. Mm -hmm. I've got some solid features on the project, which um, are due to be announced. And uh, and um, I've got a documentary coming out as well for the project, Businessman Documentary. That's going to kind of tell the story of why and how I am a mm. businessman. Yeah. With um, accounts from various people and special guest appearances and whatnot. Hmm. And um, I'm going to be doing like plenty of meet and greets all around the UK. So 
bro, I'm moving like I'm signed, bro. Like, mm. It's just me and my manager doing this, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's that's what it is right now, bro. I wanted to ask you a little bit about like when you said about the first game and you said like I'm going out I'm writing people's names on it I'm sending it out personally stuff like that yeah. so I think one thing that's hugely important as like a, an upcoming artist or an artist in their infancy is the interaction with fans and you, yeah. you turn them into supporters which is much more important yeah. Bro, like, they're my people man They, Bro, they love me I love them back man Yeah, that's the business I'm the businessman they're the business gang you get me? That's it It's my people's bro how important would you say that that interaction is though for like artists that potentially they just have Instagram they put a freestyle up they dip they, they don't have any interaction how important is that? Bro I can't speak for no other artist innit bro I'm different innit I haven't I'm like yet to meet artists at my stage that are on what I'm on mm. you know what I'm saying? So I can't speak for them bro I'm, a, I'm in my own lane I'm doing my own thing bro but you see my people that support me bro they give me the fuel to do what I'm doing bro mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like, I wake up to messages and, you know what I'm saying, bro? Just people speaking on, like, how inspired they are or, like, how much they believe in me and how much they've been telling all their friends and whatnot. And, bro, this it's the shit that keeps my going. Do you get what I'm mm, saying? Mm. Yeah, bro. 100%. Within the intro, I intro it as like the first artist that I've interviewed with a mask. Yeah. I personally, I'll be completely honest with you, I hate the question, like, why do you wear your mask? Because everyone says the same thing, like, da-da-da-da-da. But I wanted to ask you, kind of slightly different, what percentage of you wearing it is for branding and what percentage of it is for protection or to stay out of the, the public eye? Bro, more than anything, yeah, when I wear this mask, yeah, and when I do what I do, I want the people that support me and the people that watch and follow me to feel that they can put their face right here, bro. That they're living this life. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? So when I'm, when I am the businessman, when I'm out there and I'm giving like kids chicken and chips and Mm. taking them free like fucking meal deals and all the shit that I do, like even when they see me go step onto like some of the biggest stages in this country, which I haven't done yet, but it's due to see. I want them to feel like my face can be there. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? So that's 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 like one of the biggest reasons why I do this shit. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah, obviously I like my privacy. Yeah, and um, I'm a private person and whatnot. And I'm like not in fear of anyone. In my area, I knew them. People know what I look like. It's not a secret. Do you get what I'm saying? So... It's more about that, bro. So mm. it is branding. Don't get twisted. It is definitely branding. Like, I'm going to maintain the masked rapper image. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? But, you know what I'm saying, bro? It's it's not really about security, necessarily. Mm. It's more privacy and giving people opportunity to kind of put themselves in, in my shoes. shoes. Yeah. yeah, and that's it, bro. It's a good answer. I appreciate well, it. I'm glad, I'm glad I asked. Come on, Laurie. We're here with Laurie right now. <laughs> Get me. Laurie's going to put his face here, bro. Let's see, let's see what we can do. See what Not, we can do. Pause. But, but. <laughs> pause. <laughs> Quick one. Our sponsor, the 1994 Collective, are experts in PR and radio plugin. If you're an upcoming urban artist seeking airtime and to scale your audience, drop them a message and let them know we sent you. One thing you said within your last answer, you said that they're yet to see you touch stages, touch mm. the biggest stages in the UK. So I thought that was a perfect moment to transition into the future and to ask you, what are your goals within the music industry? Bro, my goals are like yet to be finalised. Like they're changing all the time, but they're only getting bigger and bigger. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying, my bro? Like I'm due to be and I don't just say this like in a in a big headed way, like, yeah, come fuck with me and I love me. Like it's not like some self-love type of thing. It's out of my genuine like compassion to be an inspiration. Yeah. Like, but I'm due to be the biggest artist of this decade and the next decade, bro. Like the things that I'm trying to do, even just beyond music, yeah, like I'm trying to have a real impact on my community. Mm-hmm. And that's that's my plan, isn't it? So I like in terms of breaking that down into specifics, um, I kind of just want people to wait and see. Mm. But that is what I plan to do, and it have a major impact on my community in a positive way, obviously, and take over the UK, the biggest stages, yeah, and be a real influence for 
our whole country. Like, I love British music just in general. Like, I love our country's music. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, bro. <sighs> Enemies, Brits, Mobiles, Mercury's, mm. Wembley Stadiums, O2 Arenas. Do you get what I'm saying, my bro? Even like, you're going to see me Coachellas and that soon, bro. Trust me, bro. I'm telling you. So you say, obviously, within that answer, you want to have a, a positive effect on the community. Yeah, of course, bro. So, if bro, I... bro, like I said at the beginning of this interview, my area has a real lack of role models. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? I've had to find my own inspirations by looking at people's mistakes and digging deep within myself. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So, I feel like it's time that the people around me and I'm not even just talking about strangers. I'm talking about even my own friends and family have a real inspiration to look up to because at this moment, we don't. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? It's just mm. bleak. The ends is bleak, bro. Mm. The ends is bleak and the tens is cheap. You get me? Shout out, stretch. But um, rule talk, bro. We're going to change that narrative around, bro. Mm. You get me? It's in my nature, bro. I told you, I'm destined for this, bro. Get it. And with that in mind, so let's say I were to put two scenarios on the table. Mm. One of them is you earn a modest wage through your artistry, but you're able to create the biggest impact on your community. The other is you're an A-list star, but for some reason there's a disconnect with your community. You can't make the effect, but you're tens of millions. Which which one are you taking? I build my own fucking table with my own <laughs> fucking people, bro. That's what we do. Just get it. And we do it, are we? I guess that, which is, I guess what I'm asking is what's more important What's more important? Impact or money? Impact or money? Well, it's hard to have an impact without money. Okay. Kind of, yeah. Um, so they kind of go hand in hand. Okay. They kind of go hand in hand. So I kind of appreciate the importance of both of them. But um, in terms of importance, obviously impact is mm-hmm. way more important. For me, money is not that important. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? I've okay. been in jail... Living on fifteen pound a week, mm. happy. Do you get what I'm saying? Obviously, much less responsibilities and whatnot. Sure. But um, w- the point I'm trying to make is like money doesn't kind of determine where I want this to go. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Like it's really about impact. Mm-hmm. But yeah, money will come with it because I'm a businessman. And the project. So when's that coming up? Um, due to be announced, bro. Due, due to be announced right now. But real soon this summer. This summer, within the next month or so. And what can people... Maybe by the time this interview's out, potentially, like, I'll have a... Maybe by the time the interview's out... No, in fact, definitely by the time the interview's out, this one, I'll have a day out. Okay. Yeah. And what can people expect from the project? <laughs> Learn how to be a businessman or businesswoman. Come listen to it and vibe, learn, grow. And yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's what we need to do in life. Vibe, learn, grow, in it. And outside of music, so you touched upon obviously like family life earlier, and yeah. didn't go into it too much. But yeah. essentially, like you have a great relationship with your mum, your sister, but yeah, not, yeah, not so much, not so much with your dad. What? Um, I didn't say that, but <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. How accurate? Pretty accurate. Still pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. So I, I definitely have a great relationship with my mum and sister. Facts. What are your goals within kind of a family perspective, like a more personal perspective in the future? Um, yeah, I would like to have a family one day. But to be honest, all the other stuff we've been speaking about prior to this question mm. is way higher on the priority list. Do you get what I'm saying? At the moment, anyway. I'm not even, bro, like, I'm not in my 30s, I'm in my 20s, do you get what I'm saying? So maybe the answer might change over time, mm-hmm. but at the moment, it's not really a major priority. I don't know if you've seen in my Who's Got Bars, mm. I mentioned that, um, obviously, I've got baby mum, i got you, I ain't seen for numerous years or whatever. So in terms of, like, family life, that's kind of um, my priority that I'm mm-hmm. patterning. Anything other than that isn't a major priority right now. Mm-hmm. What's a major priority right now is to make an impact in my community, get my music out there and be an inspiration. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. So, um, yeah, man, family's important. And obviously, bro, make my mum and sister feel 
appreciated because obviously they've been there with man through everything. That's while I've been on road, doing everything that don't, that they don't like, going to prison, blah, 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 coming out of prison, pursuing music. Mm. Whatever, bro, they're there. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? They're there, thick mm-hmm. and thin. Do you get what I'm saying? So um, it's just kind of making them feel appreciated, patterning the other situation. And um, yeah, man, other than that, like family is kind of a... Uh, on the back burner right now. Mm-hmm. Everything else is what I'm trying to pattern up right now. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And it seems like a great place to, to tie things up. But I did want to ask you one thing before we close. And it seems like, well, you do have obviously huge, huge plans for the future. So let's say you're watching this interview back in five years' time. What, what would you like to, to tell yourself? What would I like to tell myself? Bro, I don't need to tell myself. Nothing in particular. I'll just watch this whole interview and I'm just going to remind myself... In five years, in five years, bro, in five years, the mission's going to be semi-complete, bro. Trust me. So it's just uh, a confirmation. Do you get what I'm saying? Affirmation, confirmation, Mm. reinforcement, Mm. whatever word you want to use. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Um, I know where I'm going, bro. I don't doubt it. Mm. I don't doubt it even like a little bit. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? 100%. We're going to get there, bro. I'm going to get there. I believe even you, you're going to get there. Bro, like, what people put in is what they get out. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Mm. So, that's it, bro, innit, bro? We're moving forward with proper vibes, proper energy, proper learning and proper growth, innit? 100%. How have you found it? Oh, what, this in? Yeah, bro, man. Come on, man. Discovery rap all day, man. Shout out them, man. Doing big things, bro. Watch out for the festival. Soon come, bro. Oh, you know, it's exclusive. Gonna, gonna headline the up-and-comers. You get me? You get to see it first before anyone. That's it. Do you get what I'm saying, bro? Facts. Hey, Facts. You get to see the Daves and the Central Seas before they're Daves and Central Seas. Do you get what I'm saying? You get to see me before I'm on Wembley Stadium. Do you get what I'm saying? So let's go. Discovery rap all day. Big facts. And one last thing, if you can think of it quick enough. Mm. Who do you nominate within the industry, the UK music industry, to, to come and sit across the table and to, to have a similar conversation? What do you mean? So it could be a rapper... Uh, what do you mean have a be. similar conversation like explain that so to be a guest on, on the show who do you nominate oh you on know? this show yeah yeah bring stretch stretch yeah bring stretch okay bring See. stretch man stretch is like me and stretch have had like the same upbringing the same kind of influence and experience but we've embraced it very differently okay like, as you can see I'm very about the people growth positivity but he's kind of gone the other way. He's a bad he's a bad influence. Do you get what I'm saying? So get his perspective as well. Do you get what I'm saying? Get make it well rounded. See if we can make it happen. Yeah, man. Nice one, bro. Unreal. No, I love my Thank bro, you. man. Thank I you for having it, me, man. Bro. It's been sick, my bro. No, it's so good. Love. Unreal. Yeah, we'll go.